we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Also, our first time guest, if you are viewing for the first time, we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we welcome you. Amen. We welcome you. Actually, today we have an extra hour blango. Oh, blango, yes, I pronounce it right. Blango on the line. Sister, we greet you. We welcome you. We've been expecting you to join us for many, many years. I'm glad that you are here today. Also, we have Brother Damola also on the line. We greet you. Amen. We greet everyone else that I can see. Of course, I don't know you are there. Just greet you. We welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are going to be blessed today. We have uh, Prophetess Kelly Cruz. She is with us today. Praise the name of Jesus. Prophetic Sunday. Amen. Let us welcome Prophetess Kelly Cruz. She's not a stranger here at Everlasting Life Christian Center. We've been knowing her for many, many, many years. Prophetess Kelly, welcome. Thank you, Apostle Sam, and I'm, I'm just excited to be with you guys today, and um, Prophetess Marsha, I love you both very dearly, and I'm just excited to be able to worship with you guys this, this morning. Just, um, you know, this is just a, a very, as you said, an unprecedented time that we're, we are in right now, but God is still amazing, and he is still moving, and so this is... Um, just a great time to just be as we begin this morning i just want you to release a praise right where you are just hallelujah just take a moment Lapa, and just Baka, begin to Lapa, thank Lapa. the lord thank god yes. for everything that he has already done and that he's yes. doing and that he is going to do so we just give god glory Father, oh, we, we thank you glory. today. We bless you your praise. name, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that even right now your you're going name. to move and just move so instrumentally today, uh, Father. We thank you, Lord, thank for you, just man. opening up spirits and hearts and thank minds you, to receive. And I just thank you, Lord, for thank Apostle you, Lord. Uh, and, and Prophetess God. We thank you for their ministry. We thank, thank you, you for just who they are in you. We thank you for everlasting life. Christian Center, God, I just thank you for the people. And so today, God, as I go forth, I pray that you would just move and have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. I want Amen. to go to, and I'm just going to say this before I begin. Uh, I I have I got a text from uh, Prophetess Marsha from Pastor Marsha, and uh, she didn't tell me anything about what was going on. She just said we're at the end of our fast. So I don't know any theme that you guys have had. I haven't spoken to anybody. And we do this all the time. Apostle could tell you this. We don't talk. We I just come in and minister. So I don't, I'm not sure what theme he has been preaching or anything, but I'm going to release what God gave me at the beginning of the year. And I, I feel that it's very applicable right now. And we're going to go to Isaiah 43. 18 and 19, and I want to read it from the Message Bible, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, and I want to read it from the Message Bible, and it says, stop dwelling on the past, don't even remember these former things, I am doing something brand new, something unheard of, I want you to just talk to yourself, I know we can't touch our neighbor unless you're with somebody at your house or in your car, wherever you're watching right now. But I want you to uh, just talk to yourself and say, God is doing something unheard of. God is doing something unheard of. So verse 19 says, I am doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? Uh, there's a version of this that it says, um, uh, it says, don't keep going over old history. So it says, stop, don't keep going over old history. Excuse me. Don't even remember these former things. And I believe that's the message Bible version. Excuse me. It says, don't keep going over old history. And so today I want you to just um, tell yourself, I expect to expand. I expect to expand. And I want to um, thank God that Leslie... Bridges and her family's watching right now from Orlando. 
uh, Florida on Facebook, I believe. Thank you, Leslie, for tuning in today. And, and we welcome everybody from around the globe. I know this is a global ministry of a global reach. So right now, wherever you're watching from, we thank God for you and we welcome you. So expect to expand. This is a, a, a time and and it's it's um since of course last year and i don't want to focus on covid or the pandemic but this is a, a time that we're living in that we've had to adapt because if we don't adapt we will literally just die where we are so we've had to be very adaptable as people as as people of god as as people in general as families as uh, just anybody on the planet it's not just an area and we know this it's a, a global pandemic so the globe has had to adapt to new things to new ways uh, adapt to new ideas adapt to new possibilities adapt to uh ways to grow uh, uh, ways to increase and so uh you have had to be pulled out of your comfort zone you've had to come out of a place that you've been used to being in and i i do have to tell somebody and a lot i just saw something even yesterday on google when it said when things get back to normal but i want to tell somebody today that things aren't going to go back to normal and i'm not saying that to scare somebody i'm not saying that to put fear into you but as things uh as things transition and as things progress we are not going to see it the way it used to be and so we have to get out of that get out of that place and out of that mindset uh, of waiting until things get back to normal to begin actually living. And so I want you to tell yourself right now, I expect to expand. I expect to expand. If, if you don't become adaptable and begin to expand your thinking and expand your mindset to embrace what what will be then you will be uh stuck and stagnated in, in a place that you you find yourself in a place of frustration or or a place of fear because you have not chosen to adapt to new ideas that could cause you to progress and cause you to develop amen i want to read the definition of expand and expand is the action of becoming larger or more extensive more extensive it, it is to of course we and we know what the definition of expand is but i just want to give you some words to uh i want it to resonate in your spirit it says to increase in size enlargement and extension augmentation it's development when you expand, you develop, you develop your mind, you develop your heart, you develop your, your spirit is developing when you begin to expand. It's not just expanding in business. It's not just expanding financially. It's expanding mentally, emotionally. It's expanding spiritually. God is trying to get you to a, a new place to understand that this is a critical time to be focused on God. It, I, I just saw something earlier today and it said, I, I can't keep paying attention to the likes i can't keep paying attention to uh what what how people like me or how many likes i get on social media i have to pay attention to god and, and god is requiring more of us right now amen uh, i i see as we as we went through the first part of the uh, pandemic last year i saw people come together there was unity but as time progressed i saw people falling away again and, and kind of having uh some people begin to be uncaring and god is saying i'm trying to get your attention i'm, I'm trying to uh, get you into a place where you crave me where you want more of me where you can't live without me don't pay attention to what the world is saying don't pay attention to what the world can offer you but i want you to get into a place where you expand in your spirit you want more of me the capacity the room for me expands and you can have more of what i have for you amen so it's not just about expanding financially or or um you know socially it's about expanding spiritually it's about expanding mentally amen and maturing and developing and 
and coming to a place of diversification. Amen. You're diversifying. You're, you're, there's a build up. There's a build out. When you, when you expand the uh, building, you build it up or you build it out. The territory is expanding to the right and to the left. The, the tent cords must be stretched. Amen. Stretch your tent cords to the right and to the left and, and expect to expand. There's a, there's a, uh, multiplication amen things are beginning to multiply they are they are growing there's a you're in a growth process right now that's why it's uncomfortable you're not stagnant i want you to just prophesy to yourself right now and say i'm not stagnant i'm not i'm not at a standstill i don't have to stay stuck come on amen i know that that it has been challenging and i know that we are still in a very challenging time there are there are things that we've had to embrace you you may uh you may not be able to meet in person some places are some places aren't there's restrictions here they aren't there there's things we have to do here and you may not have to do it there but in the grand scheme of things you can still be who god has called you to be amen and so the, it's critical now that i begin to embrace who god has called me to be and who he's requiring me to be in the moment i can't wait until 2000 and and uh 25 and 2030 to begin to think about being who god has wanted me to be amen i have to do it now we we've come into a new year and it's not about making a new resolution it's just simply about being in position to be who god has required you to be amen i was as i was studying and, and I came to the, the beginning of this year, the, the Spirit of the Lord gave me this word, and he said, it's time to expect to expand. And and he began to speak to me, and he said, a lot of people are, they they have the the uh, the great cliches down, they, they say they're going to shift the paradigm, that we're in a paradigm shift, that there are things that are happening right now and we we have to shift and and be be um willing to shift the paradigm but god spoke to me and he said it's not about shifting it's literally about changing the paradigm and the a paradigm is a typical example a model or a pattern and so many have been stuck in a pattern that does not produce anything. You've been stuck in a, a pattern of tradition. You've been stuck in a pattern of religion. You've been stuck in a pattern of, of, of chaos and, and a pattern of confusion and a pattern, a, a cycle that has, has kept you in a place of, of a pattern of generational curses that have continuously, uh, continuously over and over manifested in your life. And God is saying, I need you to get up right now and begin to embrace, embrace, amen, expand and begin to change the pattern change the model of what you're used to because as as the world and as the earth is adapting amen we have to be adaptable if you want to see growth glory to god then you have to begin to actually change the paradigm around you so many of us uh, especially in ministry we have been stuck in a a microcosmic world we we uh let me just and god was giving me this stuff he was downloading it to me and and we've been stuck in a place a microcosm where we've only been used to doing things one way we've been used to everything flowing the same way everything being comfortable for us everything uh being uh so so some people i i've heard some people say um prophetess Marsha, they've said i can't wait until i get back into the church so i can shout but god is saying why can't you shout in your living room or or out in your yard why can't you shout in the kitchen why can't you give me praise right where you are oh hallelujah and so god is saying i need you to get outside of this small microcosmic space that you have put yourself in i never put you there god is saying i never put a limit on you i never put you in this place that you you continuously stay stuck in and repeat cycles amen and so microcosmic means it's a community a place a situation that is encapsulated and it has miniature characteristics 
And God is trying to get us to a place where we say, I'm not going to continue going over old history. Hallelujah. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. There's a new normal. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. You will see it spring forth. I will make ways in the desert. Hallelujah. And, and so it's up to us to say, I don't want to stay stuck in this miniature community or this this place where the, they have there's a, a a place of miniature characteristics or qualities that I'm only used to it like this and I've not allowed myself to get used to it like that or expand my 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 th my thinking my thought process to begin to see things from another lens hallelujah God is trying to get you to see things through his lens if I if I take my glasses off right now, I cannot see. I, it's like I, I really, I can see maybe down the street, I can see the street sign. But if I had to read something right now, there's no way I can read it because I need a certain lens. I need a, I need, I need the lens to see. And God is saying, a lot of you have been seeing blurry. You've not been able to see properly because you're not allowing me to put my lens, my, my, my filter. You've been looking through every other filter, but you've been not using my lens to see the, the potentiality, the possibility, the, the development that I want to bring you to. And so right now, I, I just want you to lay hands on yourself and say, I expect me personally, I'm prophesying to myself right now. There's a lot of things that God is doing, even in my life. And I expect to expand. It doesn't matter what the enemy tried to do. Come on, somebody. I feel like preaching today because the enemy literally was trying to Wait. take me out last year. And it wasn't COVID. It was other things that were happening. It was it was cancer. There were things that were that were going on. But praise and glory be to God. I am here and I'm praising him and I'm back on my feet and I'm doing what God has called me to do. So there is no reason for you to lay down and die. Come on, hallelujah. Don't be stuck. Hallelujah. I want to uh, uh, just share this story. I have a couple of stories I want to share. And uh, there was a young lady she was making, and it may seem silly, but it really fits. There was a young lady, she was uh, cooking a pot roast and she got, she got a pot out and she cut both ends of the pot roast off and put it in the pan. And her daughter said, mommy, why would you cut all that meat off and put it in the pan? And she said, I don't know, grandma used to do that. So we cut the ends off and we put it in the pan. And she said, well, I'm going to call grandma and ask her why you do that. Cause I feel like this is a, you're wasting meat. And so she called her grandmother and she said, grandma, why, why would you have mommy cut the ends of the meat off to put the roast in the pan? And uh, the grandma said, oh man, uh, great grandma did that. And that, that we just did it for, we've done that for years. It's been like 20, 30 years we've been doing that. And we put it in the pan. So she said, you should just call great grandma and ask her why she started that. And so she called the great grandmother and she said, great grandma, why, why do mommy and grandma cut the ends off the roast and put it in the pan to cook it? And the great grandmother said, oh, baby, I, I didn't even have a pan big enough to cook the roast. So I cut the ends off to make it work. And this thing had followed them for 30 years. And they never thought to say, wait, I'll just put it in a bigger pan. They just passed down a cycle and tradition. I know that sounds like a silly analogy. It sounds like a funny story. But at the end of the day, there are things that we have been doing. Hallelujah. Glory to God that, that God is saying, I need you to break a cycle. I need you to begin to adapt to a new thing. I need you to begin to expand, put yourself in, out, take yourself out of the small place where people have cut the corners glory to god where people have cut you down where people have uh, uh where people have tried to minimize you because they they don't think you belong in a an expanded territory they don't think you fit in a a bigger space uh, so people will cut you down with words people will cut you down they'll 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 kill your spirit they'll kill your idea they'll kill your vision they'll kill your dream and you have to be bigger than what is trying to take you out hallelujah 
but you have to set a new standard for you. I want you to tell yourself right now, this is the moment where I begin to set a new standard for my life. Hallelujah. I'm not going to stay stuck. I want to, I want to show you this. Uh, let me just see where I, I put it real quick. I want to show you this picture. Let me just grab it real quick. Give me a minute um, because it's very, very, very prolific. Uh, uh, let me see. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's a Rolls Royce and it has a boot on the tire, a Rolls Royce. And it has a boot on the tire. Tell somebody you can't just be anywhere. You can't get stuck. You can't stay stag stagnant. If you're by yourself, tell yourself, I can't just be anywhere. I can't remain stuck. I cannot be in the wrong place anymore. Hallelujah. So this, this Rolls Royce, it has a boot on the tire. Amen. And it says uh, on, on this, on this particular comment, it says, do you notice the boot on this Rolls Royce and as powerful and as valuable as this car is, it won't go anywhere because it's illegally parked. Uh, whoever came to put the boot on, they didn't care that it was a Rolls Royce. They didn't, they didn't uh, care who, whose car it was. They didn't care how much money the person had. And, and some of you are frustrated because you are, you're in a place and you feel locked down. And, and the people who uh, have put uh, the lock on you or the enemy has put a lock on you, he doesn't care how valuable you are. He doesn't care how much you're worth. And so it, sometimes the issue is that you're illegally parked in a relationship or in a position or a job or you're, Ill, you're illegally parked in, in uh, uh, an assignment that you're not supposed to be in. And so you're finding yourself locked and you can't go anywhere and you're in a place that God never called you to be. And so just because you have decided to do it doesn't mean God ordained it or destined it. And you have to be in the position where you say, God, when, when I want, I want what you want for my life. Amen. What, as I begin to grow and expand, and as I expect to expand, I want to expand to the place that you have destined and designed for me. I don't want to do things on my own anymore. Hallelujah. And so you have to get your mind mindset to a place where you say, God, as you begin to expand and, and begin to allow my mind to shift and allow uh, the paradigm to change and allow me to come out of this microcosmic space that I've been stuck in, God, please let me be in the assignment and position that you've called me to be. Because Sometimes we, we're in a place because it's convenient, but that doesn't mean it's expedient. Come on, hallelujah. And so convenience is killing you because you, you've allowed yourself to stay in convenience and be comfortable for so long. And it's become, it's become mundane and it's not expedient. You can't grow there. And so don't park uh, in a place that God has called you to pass, pass by, excuse me, and, or rest in a no parking zone. And why would I say that? I, I'm saying that today because well, you have to set a new standard for yourself and stop cutting corners and, and stop being in positions that God never called you to be and stop trying to do stuff. Some of you are in, uh, you're trying to be uh, on this team and God has has ordained for you to be on this team. Amen. Over here, you're trying to be on the team on the right. And God is saying, that's not what I've called you to be. You're trying to do too much. Some of you are trying to do too, too many things. And God is saying, I need you to focus and do what I've called you to do. Then you will see development. Then you will see expansion. Then you will see me release production in your life. Hallelujah. So God is saying today, stop endorsing the old stop staying stuck in a position that I didn't call you to be in uh, because if you expect me to release the new you can't stay and continue to endorse the old if you expect God to release the new yeah. you cannot uh, you cannot stay in a place where you continue to endorse the old hallelujah I'm almost finished you cannot Allow yourself to, uh, to, as what you see, 
reduce the quality of what you expect. So no matter what it looks like right now, amen, no matter how it has felt, I know so many people have gone through so many things in the past year. There are stories, there, there are so many, we could listen to people for days on end, myself included, I've gone through things. But you have to make the choice, the conscious choice to say, God, I'm not going to let what I see reduce my expectation. God, I'm not going to allow what I see reduce my uh, expectation of the quality of what I expect. Hallelujah. So there's, there's a level, a dimension of quality that God releases to us. And just because I can't see it in the natural right now does not mean that I allow myself to begin to reduce the quality of what I'm expecting. I hope that makes sense to somebody. Hallelujah. God isn't going to give you an off brand when he said he was going to give you the best. Hallelujah. If that makes sense. Uh, God, it, he, he is expecting you to set a new standard. Hallelujah. I'm almost finished. You cannot be afraid to stand out in this season you you have to understand that that some things are not going to it when god begins to do something there are things that are not going to fit in a, in a paradigm anymore they will not fit in the norm and that's when you have to say god i thank you that i have the audacity to change the paradigm in my atmosphere hallelujah i'm going to have the audacity to expect to expand i'm going to have the audacity to continue to uh, move forward and I'm going to see it spring forth. If it's springing forth, it is literally jumping at you. It's, it's springing forth. It's, it's jumping. It's leaping. Hallelujah. It's, it's something that is coming brand new. Amen. It says in this scripture, you will see brand new. It's something that we are not used to. It's unusual. It's said in the scripture, unheard of. And so you, you can't be expecting the same exact thing uh, coming or something that looks similar or something that you've already had, something you've already experienced. This is something brand, brand, brand new. It's something unheard of. So in allowing yourself, your spirit, your mind to begin to line up with the will of God so cohesively, oh, hallelujah, that nothing can distract you uh, to, to look to the right or to the left. And the enemy cannot have a hold on your life with uh, worry, with doubt, with fear, with anxiety. Come on, amen. There, there, there are things that you have to begin to take charge of and begin to cancel. Cancel the assignments that the enemy has been trying to keep you crippled with. Hallelujah. You have to see greater to embrace the fullness of what God has for you. I want to read the stories I'm getting ready to finish. I just want to tell you two things. One day I was, I had preached and uh, it, it, a few years ago, I had preached somewhere and it, we got out of church really, really late, and, but I was really, really hungry. I didn't even really get to eat before I went to preach because I flew in late and then I had to go preach and then I was starving. And so the pastor, the young lady, she said, oh, uh, this is open. It was a drive-thru. It was like McDonald's or something. So I said, that's fine. Um, so we were going through the drive-thru and it seemed like we were waiting, 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 like 15 minutes in, in the drive-thru. We had placed the order and the cars weren't moving and we were talking. So it wasn't, you know, but some people were beeping their horns, getting irritated, agitated. And we were the third car from the window. So there was a, a car that was getting their order. There was a car in front of us. We were the third car. And the car at the window, it seemed like it was taking so long for them to, to finalize the order. So the car right behind them got out of line. They had already placed the order, literally waited 15 minutes in line, waiting for their order. Literally, as soon as they pulled their car out and got out of line, it was our turn and we moved to the front of the line. And some of you are literally that close to your complete breakthrough. And you're frustrated because you've had to wait and you have put your, you are pulling yourself out of position. 
and and you're frustrated because it seems like you've been waiting for a long time and instead of ex continuing to expect to expand and preparing for the de and developing and allowing god to augment you and increase you you are so frustrated that you're going to pull yourself out and park yourself somewhere where the enemy can can put another stronghold on you and you'll stay stuck and god is stuck trying to get you to a place where you say today i expect to expand i'm not going to let anything take my focus hallelujah i'm not going to allow any person to come and talk me out of my destiny glory to god i'm not going to allow things to 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 cancel the assignment over my life i'm not going to allow my spirit to be crippled anymore by by fear and doubt and worry i'm not going to allow what what it looks like in the natural to cause me to uh to to say that's not valuable anymore because i can't see it and i want to read the story as i get ready to finish today there was a, a a father and he said to his daughter there he he gave his daughter this car it was in the garage and it had been in the garage for a long long time in the car uh, i know i have these car stories today but they're just fantastic to me so the car had been in the garage for a long time and it actually it had dust on it and the dad didn't take it out and wash it. It had been sitting and it had been um, covered up in the garage. There was all kinds of other stuff around it. And the father said to his daughter, um, you graduated with honors and I'm so proud of you. And so here's a car that I got a whole long time ago. And I know you need a car. It's several years old. And she was looking at him like, yeah, several years old. It seemed like about 50 years old, dad. But the, the father said, before I give it to you, I want you to take it to the used car lot downtown and tell them that I want to sell it and see how much they offer uh, to you for the car. And the daughter said she went to the used, well, she went to the used car lot and she, she said, uh, my, my father has this car and he, he wants to sell it. How much will you offer it, uh, offer us for it in the, the car? Uh, the guy at the car lot said a thousand dollars. And so she went back to her father and she was frustrated. She said, dad, they only wanted to give us a thousand dollars because it looks worn out. It's old. It looks dirty. And, and the father said, well, take it, take the picture down to the pawn shop and see what the pawn shop will offer you. And the pawn shop owner said, he, he started laughing. He said, I'll give you a hundred dollars for the car. And she was just really upset then she thought her dad was playing games and and just being silly with her and so the the father um he started laughing and he said just do me one more favor he said i want you to take the picture down to the car club and show them the car and so the daughter took the picture of the car down to the car club and returned and told her father she was screaming and she said Daddy, some people in the car club offered me $100,000 for it because it's a Nissan Skyline R34. It's an iconic car sought after by many. And the, and the father said, I wanted you to know that when you are at the right place at the right time and you, you stay in position and you don't get frustrated in the process, somebody who was supposed to see your worth will see it because it has been an ordained and a set time. And so I want somebody to understand that today, God is expecting you to expand no matter what it has looked like. Oh, hallelujah. So you, you cannot, I, I am finished. You cannot remain in that microcosmic space that you've created as a safety net for yourself. And, and you're not seeing any anything be produced and so you're frustrated and god is saying i told you to change the paradigm i told you to change the pattern i told you to expand i told you not to keep going over old history i told you to not keep repeating things i told you to uh remember not the former things nor consider the things of old behold i'm doing a new thing brand new unheard of things that you if you allow yourself to expand you will be able to maintain them you will be able to not just have them in your hand but you will be able to maintain this new dimension the higher dimension that i'm calling you to come to in this moment of time and god is saying 
This is my requirement of you. So as you go forth this year, I am trusting that I will hear praise reports of expansion. God has, and God has been stretching me to a capacity that I've not ever been stretched to personally myself and, and downloading things in my spirit. And it's an immediate, I have to act on it immediately. And I'm seeing the results come just because I'm acting immediately. So you don't know what God has for you. You don't know the place, the time. You don't know who's watching you. You don't know he has, who he has set up for you. You don't know the connection. You don't know who you are assigned to in the earth. And just because you literally put yourself in a place to expand, God is going to open that door for you. I prophesy that today. I prophesy Amen. that you will see a, a refreshing in your life. I prophesy new beginnings. Amen. I prophesy that even now God is releasing the unheard of over your life. Glory to God. Amen. God is releasing the brand new hallelujah things that, that you have not even laid eyes on yet. They, it's not something that you're used to. I want you to tell yourself, this isn't going to be something I'm used to. I prophesy. I prophesy. I prophesy expansion that is beyond your comprehension amen it's not just a about a, 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 an upgrade of your car or an upgrade of your phone this is expansion beyond your wildest expectation so i prophesy that to you today oh hallelujah lord god we we just thank God for this time. I, I pray that God, whatever they put their hands on in this season, whatever you allow them to obtain, they will have the, they will have the stamina, they will have the development, the maturity to maintain it. There will be no loss, no lack. God, we thank you today for increase in Jesus' name. I thank you and I praise your name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. God, I just thank you today. Pastor Sam, thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Man, powerful, powerful. Glory to God. I, I, I like this. Uh, we are truly blessed, prophetess. I expect to expand. Come on, yes. I want somebody to say that. I expect to expand. I, I like that. Every time you come, you always give us confirmation. Uh, wow. I bless <laughs> God for your life. I, I receive this. We receive this. In Jesus' name, it's kind of similar to what I've been preaching. Been telling them you cannot stay in the valley. Your destination wow. is the mountain top. You can't chill in the valley. You got to keep on moving forward. God didn't call you to be in the valley. God has ordained your life to get to the mountain top. I love this. I expect to expand. I, I like something else you said. He said, if you want God to endorse the new, you cannot stay in the old. Oh, my, my. Well, the old things passed away. God Amen. is doing new. We are truly blessed, woman of God. Thank you very much. I want somebody to type on the screen. I expect to expand. No matter what is going on, no matter what is happening in the universe, I mm -hmm. expect to expand in the name of Jesus. Because perseverance is faith and faith is moving. Faith is corresponding action. Start moving to the mountain top. Wow, wow. Thank you, woman of God. We are truly blessed and those, if you want God to endorse the new, amen, you can stay in the old. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woman of God, we thank you. We thank, thank you. you. I won't keep you too long. I just want to release this and I, I want to share something. Um, I, as I'm, as I, as you mentioned um, for me to release a prophetic word. I just want to challenge the people and it may sound a little elementary, but I'm telling you, this is what God is saying. It's time to begin to dance in advance. It's time to praise Hallelujah. In advance because, mm. and it's not, oh, I've heard that before practice Kelly, but it, but right now God is expecting your, your praise to be so expectant and ready to receive what he wants to release in your life. Uh, there, you you have to have a spirit 
of expectation. And, and there are different dimensions to the release. Some people may not be traveling the globe as Apostle Sam is. Some people, you may have um, something happening locally in your life. It could just be one small, uh, it could be one, one simple phone call that happens in your business that completely catapults and changes something. So I'm prophesying right now that you need to be praising and dancing in advance. I know, know it sounds like a, a very, um, uh, uh, an umbrella type prophetic word, but God is saying it's time to praise and dance in advance. It's time to stretch your tank cord. So I'm prophesying that to you. I, I, I just want to, I want to share this and I'll, I'll just be really fast. I got a phone call three, four, three weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, I didn't even have the person's name saved in my phone. I answered the, the call. It was a young, it was the assistant of another um, pastor. And she said, I'm here with so-and-so. And it wasn't, she wasn't, she wasn't talking about the lady she assisted. She was giving me somebody else's name. And the, I, I was, when I heard the person's name, my mouth was like, like, <laughs> and, and she said, this person would like to speak to you. I've never met the person apostle. I've never yeah. Um, I've never spoken to them in person. I've seen them before, but I've never actually met them. I've never had the opportunity to speak to them, never been in the same circle or anything like that. And when I got on the phone, the person said, now, mind you, I have a, I have a publishing company and I do have a lot of clients, but I don't advertise a whole bunch. So it's not like super visible. You understand apostle. And so yes. uh, the, the person on the other end of the phone said, you were extremely highly, highly recommended. And I want you to, I want to talk to you about taking on all of my projects for this next year. And the person is super elite. Okay. And I'm, I'm sharing mm. this because, and I don't have to say the name or anything like that. I'm saying this because it doesn't matter where you see yourself. It, one phone call can literally shift your entire existence. And so God is trying to get you to a place where when the, the phone call comes or when the situation happens, when you have that meeting, when the person shows up in your life or when God puts you in a position, you will be ready to receive and you won't be so dumbfounded or shocked. You are already praising for the, you already have the praise and the expectation in your spirit to receive what God wants to release in your life. And so that's why I shared that because there's, there are some things coming and being released, especially to entrepreneurs in the season. There are some things, there's, there <sighs> are visions, ideas, God is releasing <sighs> to you and you just have to be expecting of somebody that is able to completely shift in and be a catalyst in your life to to see what you do. It doesn't matter where you are on the planet or how small or how insignificant you think you are. God can have somebody search you out. And that's what I want to prophesy to you right now. Be prepared for a, a, an encounter. Be prepared for the unheard of. I prophesy that over your life again. I prophesy that even now, as you dance in advance, you will see the release of God. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. We receive this woman of God. Hallelujah. Truly, we receive it in Jesus' mighty name. This is what the Lord told me. For the next three Sundays, today and two other Sundays, we're going to be bringing in guest speaker. Next Sunday, we're going to have Apostle Dr. Ricardo all the way from Trinidad. He's going to come. I didn't give him topic. The last time he spoke, I gave him a topic. But this one, no. It's a prophetic. So next Sunday, we're going to have Apostolic and Prophetic Sunday. Apostolic and Prophetic Sunday for the next two Sundays. Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready for what God is about to do in your life. As a matter of fact, God has started. Maybe you don't know, he has started a good work and he's going to finish it in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. And that's one of the reasons God wants me to bring three three uh, men and women of God to come and speak into our life and give us confirmation and affirmation of what God is doing at this time. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God.